Samuel Billy Wilder was born in Sochal, Austria. Wilder was a director, screenwriter, producer, and journalist whose career spent six decades. He is regarded as one of the greatest intelligent and versatile filmmakers of Hollywood's golden age. Balking at a career in law, Wilder's creativity was inspired by his mother's girlhood experiences in America. Billy Wilder dropped out of university in 1925 and his knowledge for American culture got him into journalism. In 1926, he interviewed band leader Paul Whiteman. Whiteman was so impressed with Wilder that Wilder accompanied him on the rolling leg of his tour. He wrote crime and sports stories as a stranger for the local before being offered a job at Berlin Tabloid which provided him with experience. Developing an interest in film, Billy started to work as a screenwriter. Due to the rise of Hitler, Wilder then moved to Hollywood and continued his career as a screenwriter. He roomed with expatriate German actor Peter Law, in which they had to learn English quickly in order to join the American film industry. Afterwards, they found regular work, first at 20th Century Fox. Films such as Music in the Air and The Lottery Lover gave credits to Billy by working with writers who could translate his work. He proceeded and moved to Paramount Studios where he was able to work under his role model, Ernst Lubitsch, who then headed production. Little did Billy know that he was co-writing a screenplay which would begin his rise to fame. Wada established his directorial reputation with an adaptation of James N. Keane's Double Indemnity in 1944. At the early stages of Wada's career, classic film noir was developed. It formed during the Great Depression, taking advantage of post-war ambience of anxiety, pessimism, and suspicion to create a film style that refers to a distinct period of film history. Film noir is a cinematic term used primarily to describe stylish Hollywood crime dramas, particularly such that emphasize cynical attitudes and sexual motivations. More prominent Wilder films such as Double Identity and Sunset Boulevard are categorized as film noir. However, Wilder was not part of this film movement. After the year 1951, Wilder made a transition from film noir to comedy. However, Wilder stated that he does not simply stick to one kind of movie like say Hitchcock. Wilder makes all kinds of movies and work in different styles. He does not notice the patterns of what type of films he had made so far and decide what is next. Wilder was not aware that this film was to be in what genre. It comes naturally, just the way you do your handwriting. That's the way I look at it and that's the way I conceive it, he stated. Wilder is part of classical Hollywood cinema. Classical Hollywood cinema features three-act structure, objective storytelling, character-driven, mise-en-scene, time and space, and classical continuity editing. The Apartment, which received 10 Academy Awards nominations and 5 Academy Awards, was the most outstanding film in Wilder's career. A trait features a situation. C.C. Baxter is a lonely office judge at a national insurance corporation, lending his Upper West Side apartment to his managers to use for extra martial affairs. It is then followed by a disruption, which is when his personal director, Jeff D. Cedric, begins using Baxter's apartment in exchange for promoting him. However, Baxter is disappointed to learn Sheldrake's mistress is Frank Kublik, the elevator girl at work whom Baxter is interested in himself. Lastly, the resolution ties everything up in a strong closure. Baxter has to decide between the girl he loves and the advancement of his career. In the end, Baxter decides to quit his job and goes for the girls he loves. This film also features objective storytelling. In this book, Billy Wilder, The Complete Films, The Cinema of Wit, 1906 to 2002, it was stated that a plot in which physical or psychological disguise plays an important part can also engage its audience through the time tested technique of descriptive levels of awareness. In other words, when the audience knows more about what is going on than at least one of the characters in the scene, they feel smarter, attend more closely, and pick up subtleties. When a greater discrepancy exists between the understanding of the audience and more than one character in a scene, the dramatic possibilities multiply. The apartment is character-driven. The character mise-en-scene follows a straightforward line of episodic events and contains classical continuity editing, making this film a part of this movement. Other notable water films also follow this movement. Movies like Some Lucky like Hot and The Seven Year Each and many more. Wilder's directorial choice is based on the importance of writing. He avoided, especially in the second half of his career, 
the enthusiastic cinematography of Alfred Hitchcock and Orson Welles, because, in Wilder's opinion, shots that caught attention to themselves would distract the audience from the story. Even Wilder stated it himself in this interview done by the Greatest Guild Foundation. When you're actually writing a script, how much do you worry about the camera angles? What do you worry about when you're going to get it on the set? But it's possible to photograph it, you know. It's just, uh, you cannot photograph certain things that are unphotographable. No, I, 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 don't, I, don't, uh, I don't indulge in uh, camera tricks. I don't want, uh, uh, I don't want to one director tell to the other one, she said, did you see the setup? I said, yes, it's terrific what the guy did with the camera. I said, no, I just photographed it as simply as possible, but as elegantly as possible. You will never see a surprising shot uh, f uh, from the point of view of uh, Santa Claus, as you said before, shooting through the fireplace at the scene. From the point of view of who? Well, who, who is there? Santa Claus, maybe, he's looking at that scene. No, as, as simple as possible, you should, in my opinion, you know, when you do a picture, Certainly, certainly a, a, a serious picture. Uh, you should not see where the cut was. It should all flow naturally, logically. And but people, people think they would like to be a director because they're going to be sitting on the dolly and they say higher, 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 and then from up there they're going to. And you say, my God, this is a, a burglar up there in the roof. Uh, so he came to the roof and he's watching that scene. The biggest threat to Wilder's career is his clarity when it comes to characters' motives, which are almost always self-centered and vain. Even his purest and most idealistic heroes are lying to someone, working their own angles, willing to compromise their beliefs. No one is selfless, which Wilder sometimes view with amusement, sometimes with contempt, but rarely without sympathy and never with sentimentality. An easy way to recognize if it's a Wilder film would be the recurring theme of suicide popping out in romances and comedies. These recurring themes are seen in Double Indemnity, A Foreign Affair, Sunset Boulevard, Sabrina, The Apartment, and Buddy Buddy. His works are often focused on subjects that had previously been considered unacceptable screen materials, including alcoholism, prisoner of war camps, and prostitution. A number of his films, such as Sunset Boulevard and The Apartment, weigh the emptiness of modern life. A quote from Mordor was, Happiness was working with Jack Lemon. That shows how much she had loved Jack Lemon. A 30s screenwriter who became a contract director in the 40s, by 1950, Wilder had come to be regarded as his consummate studio auteur. Producing from the mid 1950s, he and his co screenwriters were renowned in the front office and fan magazines for making money, teasing audience sensibilities, and pleasing their critics. If the early 1960s saw a critic downturn, by the mid-1970s, Wilder's reputation led to accolades and awards. During his career, Wilder was nominated for 20 Academy Awards and won 6. At the 1988 Academy Awards, he was given the Irving G. Talbot Award for a consistently high quality of motion pictures production, having already received a Lifetime Achievement Award from the American Film Institute. Having already received a Lifetime Achievement Award from the American Film Institute, in 1986. Four of his films, Sunset Boulevard, Some Like It Hot, Double Indemnity, and The Apartment appeared on the AFI's list of top 100 films in both the list of original 1998 and 10th anniversary 2007 incarnations. Spanish filmmaker Fernando Truba said in his speech for the Academy Award for Best Foreign Language Movie in 1993, I would like to believe in God in order to thank him, but I just believe in Billy Wilder. So, thank you, Mr. Wilder. A French filmmaker, Michael Hazana Vicious, also thanked Billy Wilder in the Best Picture Oscar speech for the artist by saying, And I want to thank three persons. I want to thank Billy Wilder, I want to thank Billy Wilder, and I want to thank Billy Wilder. Thank you very much. All in all, Billy Wilder is a well adored director, even in the 21st century where directors look up to him and respect him. I, myself, do love Wilder and I'm grateful to be able to chance upon a legendary director that's ever graced the film industry. And, in my opinion, I feel that the key takeaway from Billy Wilder is to create films with no boundaries, to not let what is unpopular get in your way of making your own film, and to get wild like Wilder did. Billy Wilder will forever be a legend in Hollywood's heart. <laughs>